ಹಲೋ ಲಿಸ್ನರ್ಸ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ವಿ ಟಿ ಯು ಇ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಂ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರವಿ ಕೆ ಎಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಕಲ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಟ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾವರ್ಧಕ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ಇನ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಫೋರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಎ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕಾಂಪೋನೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೈಡ್ರಾಲಿಕ್ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ಕಮ್ಸ್ upon completion of this session the student shall be able to identify the graphic symbols for various types of hydraulic components the student shall be able to explain a pump unloading circuit and double pump hydraulic system the student shall be able to explain hydraulic cylinder sequencing and synchronizing circuit the student shall be able to explain speed control circuits for linear actuators <clears throat> firstly we shall discuss about pump unloading circuit so here an unloading valve is used to unload the pump this unloading valve is similar to pressure relief valve that is the construction and operation of an unloading valve is same as that of the pressure relief valve unloading valve senses the pressure in the external line at the end of the strokes the unloading valve will open and release excess pressure to the tank even in the spring centered mode the unloading valve will open and release the excess pressure into the tank so the and function of an unloading valve is to unload the pump so here we can visualize the circuit for the same a four way three position directional control valve is used a double acting cylinder and the cylinder is in the retracted position this valve is manually actuated and spring centered type a tank is used a filter and a hydraulic pump a chuck valve is also used and this unloading valve senses the pressure in the external line and the excess pressure is rele- released to the tank via this unloading valve so initially the connections are shown for the center path configuration that is the neutral position so here a uh, pump pumps oil and then since there is no work to carry out so the unloading valve opens and the pump is unloaded now when you operate this lever the valve will shift to the left envelope mode so that p is open to this b and a is open to the tank so when p is open to b okay when the directional control valve is manually actuated that is with the help of the lever when the valve is actuated so that p is connected to a and b is connected to t so when p is connected to a and b is connected to t extension of cylinder will take place so in this the that is the oil is applied onto the blank end of the piston and the cylinder extension takes place and uh, the oil present in the rod end is drained to the tank via directional control valve and at the end of the stroke when the cylinder is fully extended pressure builds up in the pipeline so that when the pressure builds up in the pipeline the unloading valve senses the pressure that is in the external line and when the pressure exceeds above the set level so then the unloading valve will open and excess oil is released to the tank similarly when the lever is operated again so when the valve shift to the right envelope mode p is connected to b 
and A is connected to T. So when P is connected to B and A is connected to T, the oil will enter into the rod side of the cylinder and cylinder retraction will take place. So that when the cylinder is retracting, the oil present in the piston end or in the blank end is drained to the tank via directional control valve at the end of the stroke. So pressure builds up in the pipeline because there is no further work to carry out. So then the unloading valve will be monitoring the pressure in the pipeline and when the pressure increases above the set level, so then the unloading valve opens and the pump is unloaded. Similarly, when you release this lever, the valve will shift to the center path configuration because of the opposing spring forces. So in the center path configuration, again, since port P is blocked, so that the pressure here is increased so that the pump is unloaded with help of the unloading valve. So the construction and operation of an unloading valve is similar to that of a pressure relief valve. Next, we shall discuss about double pump hydraulic system. <coughs> so in this double pump hydraulic system, so here, a high pressure, high pressure, low flow pump, low flow pump with low pressure, low pressure and high flow pump is used. So the typical application is a punch press in which the hydraulic ram must extend rapidly over a large distance with very low pressure but high flow requirements. However, during the short motion portion, when the punching operation occurs, the pressure requirements are high due to the punching load. Since the cylinder travel is small during the punching operation, the flow rate requirements are also low. So in this, the circuit will eliminate the necessity of having a very expensive high pressure, high flow pump. So when the punching operation begins, the increased pressure opens the unloading valve to unload the low pressure pump. The purpose of pressure relief valve is to protect the high pressure pump from over pressure at the end of the cylinder stroke. The chuck valve protects the low pressure pump from the high pressure which occurs during the punching operation. At the ends of the cylinder stroke and when the DCV that is directional control valve is in its spring centered mode. Next, we shall move on to counterbalance valve application. So this figure shows the use of counterbalance or back pressure valve to keep the vertically mounted cylinder in the upward portion while the pump is idling. The counterbalance valve is set to open at slightly above the pressure required to hold the piston up. This permits the cylinder to be forced downward when pressure is applied on the top. The open center directional control valve unloads the pump. The directional control valve is a solenoid actuated spring centered valve with an open center flow path configuration. Yeah. Next, we shall discuss hydraulic cylinder sequencing circuit. So here, two double acting cylinders are used. Two sequence valves are used. That is pressure sequence valve. Two ball type check valves are used. 
so the extension and retraction of the cylinder two cylinders takes place sequentially that is stage by stage so this circuit shows the sequence of operation as a plus that is extension of cylinder a will take first take place first then b plus that is extension of cylinder b will take place then b minus retraction of cylinder b will take first and a minus retraction of cylinder a will take place again we shall see we shall list the components used in this hydraulic cylinder sequencing circuit pressure relief valve to release the excess pressure to the tank tank filter hydraulic pump four way three position manually actuated spring centered directional control valve and a is connected to the blank end of two cylinders and b is connected to the piston that is rod end of the two cylinders and p is connected to the pump line t is connected to the tank line so initially the connections are shown with respect to the center path configuration that is both the cylinders are in the retracted position and with the help of this spring you can set the pressure on this sequence valve so when you operate the lever the valve will shift to left envelope mode in this left envelope mode p is open to a b is open to tank so when p is open to a oil will enter here so oil will flow at this location also but here the pressure is not enough to crack this or to open the sequence valve and here pass this ball type check valve a flow is not possible so flow will occur into the blank end of cylinder a and extension of cylinder a will take place during extension of cylinder a oil present in the rod side of the cylinder so that is the check valve opens and then it is released or drained to the tank via directional control valve now when cylinder a is fully extended or completely extended when there is no further work to carry out so pressure in the pipeline increases when the pressure in the pipeline is more than the spring setting pressure so then sequence valve opens and then so that the oil is the excess pressure the secondary pressure or the oil is utilized and it is made to flow in or enter into the blank end of cylinder b and cylinder b will extension of cylinder b will take place during extension of cylinder b oil present in the rod side is drained to the tank via directional control valve so now both the cylinders are in the extended position a plus and b plus so after this we need to retract the cylinders so that when you again operate the lever when the the directional control valve will shift to this envelope configuration so that p is connected to b and a is connected to the tank line when p is connected to b so oil will enter here but past this check valve the flow is not possible and the pressure is not enough to open the sequence valve so the oil will enter here into the rod side of cylinder b and retraction of cylinder b will take place when cylinder b is retracting that is b minus when cylinder b is retracting oil present in the blank end is relieved to the or drained to the tank via directional control valve so when the cylinder b is fully retracted so pressure here in the pipeline increases when the pressure in the pipeline increases sequence valve will open and the excess pressure is diverted to the rod end of cylinder a and cylinder a will start retracting so when cylinder a is retracting the oil present in the blank end of cylinder a is 
drain to the tank via directional control valve so b minus and then a minus so this is the sequence of operation which takes place in this hydraulic cylinder sequencing circuit so like this the hydraulic cylinder sequencing circuit works okay next we shall move on to locked cylinder using pilot check valves some cylinder applications like demands to lock the cylinder so that its piston cannot be moved due to an external force acting on the piston rod one method for locking a cylinder is in this fashion is by using pilot check valves so which is shown in the figure pilot check valves the cylinder can be extended and retracted as normally done by the action of directional control valve if regular check valves were used the cylinder could not be extended or retracted by the action of directional control valve an external force acting on the piston rod will not move the piston in either direction because reverse flow through either pilot check valve is not permitted under these conditions yeah next we shall move on to cylinder synchronizing circuits under cylinder synchronizing circuits first we shall discuss about cylinders connected in parallel so here this figure shows how two cylinders can be or identical you can say two identical cylinders can be synchronized by piping them in parallel however even if the two cylinders are identical it would be necessary for the loads on the cylinders to be identical in order for them to extend in exact synchronization if the loads are not exactly identical practically it is not possible also so the cylinder with the smaller load would extend first because it would move at a lower pressure level after this cylinder has fully completed its stroke the system pressure will increase to the higher level required to extend the cylinder with the greater load so here it should be noted that two cylinders are really identical so like for example differences in packing friction will vary from cylinder to cylinder so this alone would prevent cylinder synchronization for the circuit let us assume that again these two cylinders are identical and the load acting on both the cylinders are same so in this solenoid actuated four bar three position spring centered directional control valve is used and the rest components are same that is tank a filter hydraulic pump and a pressure relief valve here in the center path configuration p is connected to the tank and a is connected to the blank end of the cylinders and b is connected to the rod end of the cylinders so when we when we move to the left envelope mode so that p is connected to a b is connected to t so when p is connected to a oil will enter into the simultaneously into the say blank end of both the cylinders and extension of both cylinders will take place during extension of both the cylinders oil present in the rod end is 
release or drain to the tank via directional control valve. Now, when the pistons of these two cylinders are fully extended, then when we shift to this right envelope mode, then P is connected to B, A is connected to T, when P is connected to B, so that uh, oil will enter into the rod end of both the cylinders and cylinder retraction will take place simultaneously and the conditions we know the cylinders should be identical and also the load acting on both the cylinders should be identical so but practically it is very difficult for us to extend both the cylinders simultaneously and retract both the cylinders simultaneously next we shall discuss second that is cylinders connected in series under synchronizing circuits so here two cylinders cylinder one cylinder two are connected in series again four bar three directional control valve solenoid actuated spring offset directional control valve here tank hydraulic tank filter hydraulic pump pressure relief valves are the components used in this so connections are shown for the retracted position of the cylinders that is for the center path configuration so when you shift to this left envelope mode so when we shift to this left envelope mode p is connected to a b is connected to t so when p is connected to a oil will enter into the blank end of cylinder one and cylinder one will extend and the oil present in the rod side of cylinder one will flow into the blank end of cylinder two and cylinder two will extend and the oil present in the rod end of cylinder 2 is drained to the tank via directional control valve. So, the cylinders are hooked in series. For the two cylinders to be synchronized, the piston area of cylinder 2 must be, must equal the difference between the areas of piston and rod for cylinder 1. It should also be noted that the pump must be capable of delivering a pressure equal to that required for the piston of cylinder 1 by itself to overcome the loads acting on both the cylinders. Also it should be noted that the pressure at the blank end of cylinder 2 and the rod end of cylinder 1 are equal as per the Pascal's law. Similarly, when we shift to this envelope configuration, P is connected to B, A is connected to T. When P is connected to B, oil will enter into the rod end of cylinder 2 and cylinder 2 will start retracting and the oil present in the blank end of cylinder 2 is made to flow into rod end of cylinder 1 and cylinder 1 will start retracting and the oil present in the blank end of cylinder 1 is drained to the tank via directional control valve. So this is about cylinders connected in series. So when cylinders are connected in series, so they are they work in exact synchronization. Next, we shall discuss about speed control of hydraulic cylinders, that is linear actuators. So here we are controlling the extending speed of the cylinder. So in that we shall discuss two types. The first type is meter in circuit so in meter in 
type of speed control the flow control valve is placed in the line leading to the inlet port of the cylinder between the pump and the actuator thereby it controls the amount of fluid going into the actuator when the directional control valve is actuated to the left envelope configuration into the left envelope configuration oil flows through the flow control valve to extend the cylinder the extending speed of the cylinder depends on the setting of the flow control valve when the flow control valve is actuated to the right envelope mode that is the spring offset mode then the cylinder retracts as the oil flows from the cylinder to the oil tank through the check valve as well as the flow control valve next we shall move on to second type under speed control of linear actuators that is meter out circuit so here these are the connections shown for meter out circuit and the associated components for meter out circuit so in this type flow control valve is placed in the outlet line of the hydraulic cylinder so wherein it controls the amount of fluid going out of an actuator meter in systems are used primarily when the external load opposes the direction of motion of the hydraulic cylinder an example of opposite situation is the case of weight pulling downward on the piston rod of a vertical cylinder in this case the weight would suddenly drop by pulling the piston rod downward if a meter in system is used even if the flow control valve is completely closed so the meter out system is generally preferred over the meter in type one drawback of meter out system is the possibility of excessive pressure built up in the rod end of the cylinder while it is extending this is due to the magnitude of back pressure that the flow control valve can create depending on its closeness to being fully closed as well as the size of the external load and the piston to rod area ratio of the cylinder along with this an excessive pressure build up in the rod end of the cylinder which results in large pressure drop across the flow control valve so this produces the undesirable effect of a high heat generation rate with a resulting increase in oil temperature so in the left envelope mode when p is connected to a b is connected to t oil will enter into the blank end of the piston and cylinder extension takes place and the oil from the rod end is made to flow across this flow control valve so that the extending speed is controlled and when you move to the spring offset mode p is connected to b and a is connected to t so when p is connected to b so via this check valve will open and the rod the oil is made to flow into the rod end of the cylinder and cylinder will retract at full design speed and then the oil present in the piston end is released to the or drained to the tank via directional control valve so next we shall move on to bleed off circuit so in this type of speed control a flow control valve is placed between the pressure line and the return line so that 
it controls the fluid by bleeding off the excess which is not needed by the working cylinder this type of flow control valve is more efficient than the inlet restricting type of meter in circuit because the bypass feature will allow fluid to be exhausted to the tank at slightly higher pressure than that necessary to do the work with the meter in type pump delivery not used would discharge over the main relief valve at maximum pressure so to summarize we discussed how to identify the uh, graphic symbols for various types of hydraulic components we discussed about pump unloading circuit double pump hydraulic system we discussed about hydraulic cylinder sequencing and synchronizing circuits and lastly we discussed about speed control circuits for linear actuators so this is the reference that is fluid power with applications by anthony asposito thank you